My name is Brandon Ayers. I'm a uh, cornea and anterior segment specialist based out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And I fulfill two roles. I have a private practice called Appellment Partners of Pennsylvania. And I'm also part of the teaching service at Wills Eye Hospital. In the Philadelphia area, I serve as a, a tertiary referral source for complex anterior segment cases. So one of my favorite things to do is anterior segment repair, and in that is things like iris repair, complex cataract, and we do a, a large volume of intraocular lens exchange from lens dislocation as well as lens dissatisfaction in the premium lens market. One of the number one things that we see is lens dislocation, uh, usually from pseudo exfoliation. That's gonna be our number one source for dislocated lenses. And we've been through multiple versions of, of IOL fixation in the absence of capsular support. And years ago, we were doing a lot of cortex fixation and suturing lenses. And with the advent of, of haptic fixation, you know, also called the Imani technique, for the past, I'd say, two years, we've been primarily using haptic fixation. And that's a technique where you take a three-piece lens and you use a thin wall 30 gauge needle and you help, you, you make sclerotomies with the needle and then incarcerate the haptic of the IOL into the needle and externalize it and use cautery to basically melt the haptic, keeping the implant in place. That's the quick version, but the technique is actually quite complex. And we, there's been no purposely designed instruments for that technique, it's been surgeons you know, measuring on the eye, using a, a thin wall needle that we have to special order to get this technique to work. And, and that makes it difficult because there's no real standard. And whenever you're gonna do this technique, we're collecting devices and instruments from all over the operating room. We've been working with MST for months now at trying to perfect the instrumentation and the needle to help make this technique, the Imani technique or scleral haptic fixation, more standardized. So in this peel pack, we've got almost everything you need for this technique. It includes a, uh, a centration guide, it includes an anterior chamber maintainer, the low temp cautery, a customized needle purposely built for this procedure, as well as a caliper, which is set to 2.5 and 2 millimeters, which are some of the more common measurements you're going to need to make with this, with this technique. And the combination of this, of this peel pack being ready to go has really streamlined the surgery. And all we need to do is take the centration guide to find the center of the visual axis, make our measurements, use the custom-made needles combined with the AC maintainer to, to keep the eye pressurized, and it's really helped make this surgery much, much easier. There are so many tips and tricks for this technique. It's, you could almost write a book or a chapter. In fact, we have written books and chapters on it. So I think when you're gonna try your first case or two, it's very helpful to, to call a colleague or talk to a colleague, watch a video, do something to try and familiarize yourself with the steps. There's lots of subtle moves that go into this procedure to make it look seamless and easy, and many people find that when they try it the first time, it's not as easy as they, they thought it was going to be. Some of the key steps are going to be making sure that your scleral passes with a thin wall 30 gauge needle are even on both sides of the eye. You want even scleral passes, and you want them to be about two millimeters in length in the sclera. The leading haptic, or the first haptic that you're going to incarcerate into the lumen, is usually fairly straightforward. It's the trailing haptic where a lot of people have problems. And some of the tips to make to, to try and avoid those problems are not externalizing the first haptic. So after the IOL goes in and you've incarcerated the first haptic into the needle, let the needle go. Don't pull the needle out. If you do, it's gonna rotate the implant in the eye we're gonna end up moving that trailing haptic and make, putting it into a position that makes it very difficult to capture with the second needle. So let that needle go. It's a little bit of a leap of faith, but it'll be okay. And then if you move your incisions over or you use a, a, a more, I'll say left-handed incision, the trailing haptic then becomes a bit easier. So you'll pass your second needle, make sure the eye is always pressurized with the anterior chamber maintainer whenever you're making a sclerotomy grab that second needle and make sure that the angle that the haptic is facing and the angle that the needle are facing are the same. There's only about 50 microns of space 
in that needle left over after the haptic fills it. So any movement or any kink or misalignment won't let the haptic slide into the lumen. So you really want nice, even alignment that allows the haptic to slide in. Once that trailing haptic is in the needle, the job is done. Then you can externalize, fixate the, use the little, there's a little elastomer on the MSD needle. You can use that elastomer to help hold the haptic in place while you make sure you like your centration. Then you can remove it, uh, melt the terminal bulb, and then the case is basically finished. Sounds easy, and the kit makes it easier, but there's still a lot of technique going on.